and um, we're very excited to be here. You know, the the humidity is a little bit different, but um, born in Louisiana, I know what it's all about. And sometimes it feels kind of good to get in there, get you nice and loose. But uh, yeah, we're just uh, very, very excited to advance to this point and, and uh, look forward to competing here this weekend. Uh, do you feel like your your team uh, comes in with a little momentum uh, from uh, from the weekend? You know, scored some runs and yeah. and uh, and got going, especially with that nice performance on Sunday. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I think this team right now is um, it's it's where I we would like them to be. You know, um, last weekend they got the job done and and uh, offensively looked really good. And when you do that, you gain some confidence as as hitters. I uh, thought we played fairly good defense and, and um, you know, the key when you get here, we all know it's going to be um, is pitching and, and um, playing great defense and getting timely hits. You know, I, the one great thing about Arizona, the ball carries quite well. And I think here probably not as much. So, um, you know, our, our biggest goal is to make sure that we are swinging at good pitches and, and making solid contact. And uh, from there, the game will take care of itself. I'll let somebody else. Thank, thank you, Coach. You got it. DJ. Hi, Coach. Um, what do you think are the, you know, the matchup with Arkansas right now and the similarities of both teams? Well, there's a, um, some similarities. I think, um, you know, Arkansas is a very solid team um, uh, starting in a circle, and, and um, they, they're kind of a different offensive team, lots of power numbers, um, kind of grip it and rip it. Um, type and you know we like to kind of have a combination of our our speed and our power and so there's a little bit of difference there um but um i think both teams are are good defensively both teams are very battle tested you know arkansas has had a great year and and won the sec uh, regular season and we know all about that you know we know that we're coming into a a place where they will have lots of fans and and they're playing good softball and i think that's what postseason is all about you know, you, you, there's never an easy road um, to get to, to to the promised land, which is Oklahoma City and, and playing in the final eight. So um, we expect to have a very tough, um, competitive uh, weekend. And I think right now our team's in a good place and we just need to go out and, and, uh, and compete and have a little bit of fun. And what do you think about Charlize's makeup um, that she sort of, you know, she's had a great season and last weekend she wasn't phased by the moment, yeah. right? She just went out and did her thing. Well, that's the strength of Charlize um, Palacio. She's, um, she's very, got really good emotional stability. And um, I've, I've watched her as a young kid growing up. And when we recruited her, she, uh, she lived for the big moments. Um, I had never have seen her get rattled and, and, um, you know, she's, she's, she's got really good composure for a kid of her age. And um, I have a lot of confidence in her that um, she's going to, she's going to be able to, to get good pitches and put good swings on it. But yeah, I think it's, it, it's a lot of it is, it goes back to how she's grown up. I mean, her, her dad has been a big influence in her life. Her dad was a baseball player and her sister played softball. So she's been around the game forever. So I think when you're around the game that much, um, you have a tendency to grow mentally as well as you do with your skill set. And I think that's that's where Palacio is right now. I think she's very strong. Um, she has a very strong mental game. She's got emotional stability and she's got good physical tools. And when you recruited her, did you expect this? Did you, does, does this seem like you were just like, when this happened this year and, and, and even last weekend, you're just like, yeah, that's, sort of what I thought I'd get from her. Well, you got to remember, even the short year last year, she was our, our catcher um, pretty much regularly and Deja was not with us. And so I think that was a really good um, eye opener for everyone to, to see how she handled that. And um, she handled it quite well, um, was very stable, very mature for her age. I think that's the one thing that helps her a lot is just uh, her, her, her game maturity, but just her maturity as a person. And um, so I, I've kind of expected to see this, you know, um, you never know what a kid, what kind of number a kid's going to put up um, when they come into your program. Like I tell people all the time, you know, they ask about recruiting classes. I said, well, ask me when they're juniors and I'll tell you how good they are. 
Palacios is one of those kids right now that is really, um, you know, she's above the curve. I mean, she, she's really kind of settled down and, and played very mature softball at an early age and it's fun to watch. Great. Thanks coach. Yep. Troy. So coach, you mentioned that it's pretty humid there and obviously that's going to affect the offenses on both sides, but I was wondering, does that affect pitching at all? I know everybody talks about the offensive end, but does it affect pitching? Yeah, it does. In fact, it, um, it, it really, I think helps pitchers with their break. You know, the more humidity, the more break. It's just like you don't want to be pitching in Colorado for the Rockies. You'd rather be pitching in New York for the Yankees. <laughs> and, and part of that is just the humidity. You know, the ball doesn't carry as much, um, but the ball does break more. There's more resistance in the air. So, therefore, you have a tendency to see more break in, in pitches. And, um, you know, I, I think the big thing is just understanding that, that the game is played on the ground. You know, for us to sit here and, 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 and try to hit home runs, probably in certain times of the year. Um, and o Arkansas has um, got good power numbers, you know, but I, I think on the majority of the year right now, we're starting to get a little more humidity. And, and I, I still think the ball is going to carry out of here. I mean, I watched today and, and you, you've got to square it up. And if you square it up, the ball is going to go. So I think the home run will, st will still be a factor, um, but it's definitely not something that you're going to live by. Um, when you're playing in a, a humid climate. And then you guys did a great job of situational hitting mm -hmm. last weekend. How can you carry that over to this weekend? Well, you know, try, I hope we do, because that's, that's the key, you know, in postseason, it's, it's timely hits and timely hits are usually hits that occur with two outs. And, um, you know, when you, when you are in situations where you don't have a lot of base runners, then you've got to find a way when you do have base runners to come through in the clutch. And so, yeah, for us, I think that's going to be a huge part. And I think the team that the team that gets the timely hits and pitches well and plays good defense is the team that's going to win this um, this weekend. And then Oklahoma and Washington, they're going to be playing on ABC Saturday. Can you talk about how much the game has grown since you started coaching? Well, that's exciting. I mean, uh, yeah, since uh, 1985 when I first started here, um, the game has grown tremendously. And I'm just glad that the opportunities are, are starting to come um, for college softball and other people are starting to notice it because it is a fabulous sport. Um, great athletes that play the game at a high level. And I think it's time. I think it's time right now that our sport kind of it's bursting by the seams, but we just need to get get the right people um, to get behind us. And um, so I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, I think. Um, you know, the growth of this sport um, with ESPN, who has played a big part of it. And I think the, the SEC, you know, when they came in and started playing softball and, and uh, I knew darn well that they were going to, if they're going to get in it, they're going to get in it the right way. And I think that's helped grow the sport from coast to coast. And so there's a lot of factors that go into it. And so I'm excited to see that, you know, opportunity. And I hope, um, it, I hope it's a great ball game. And, and I got to say, I hope Washington wins. Ryan, what do you remember about uh, Courtney Dyfel as a, as a player at Cal and what is it like to coach against someone that played against you? Well, it's, it's, it happens a lot for me cause I've been around for a long time, but um, you know, I, I recruited her sister, uh, Amanda. And I remember sitting in a house with uh, her dad, Ron, who is a very good baseball coach in his own right. And, and Courtney was a good player. Courtney was competitive. Um, she was prepared. She, you know, she's about everything that you see as a coach right now. I'm, I'm just really happy for her um, that she's having the success that she's having, but she's earned that. She's, um, she's, she's got a very good um, um, softball knowledge, um, good teacher, um, understands how to handle people. And I think that's the one aspect that occurs when you start being in a game a little bit longer. 90% of the job here is managing people. And um, if you can have the, the greatest knowledge in the world, but if, if you can't get that knowledge across to people that are willing to listen, then it, uh, it falls on deaf ears. And I think, um, Courtney, I've, I've been involved with her with some clinics. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed. You know, she's um, a quality coach, and um, it did not surprise me that she's had the success that she's had here. 
And um, the other day you were talking about how, you know, like 20 years ago, you didn't think home field advantage existed in softball, kind of along those lines, um, just because of the rise of technology and the and availability of information. I mean, how much more do you know about a team like Arkansas than maybe you would have, you know, 20 years ago when you didn't play them uh, ever? Well, it, it's, it's, you can't even compare it. I mean, back in, in those days, if, you know, you'd have to be lucky to put a VHS tape in and, and, um, be there at the right time to record a game so that really it, it it was very hard to get information where today every game that the sec plays and that we play and many conferences play you can find video and so um the information is i mean we're in the information age we all know that and sometimes the information is very good and sometimes they can overload you um because at the end of the day you got to take what your team does best and, and play your game no matter who the opponent is but it's nice to be able to to, to get some looks um, at people and um, before you play them. And I think that's a big change in our game, you know, but it's been happening for quite some time. Do you have any examples of that, of, of maybe some something you've learned about a player or, or their, their sequences in a 2-2 count and, and maybe how it helps your hitters? Or... Well, there's, yeah, there's a lot of things. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and tell you everything <laughs> that, that we look for, but, um, but yeah, I mean, when you're looking at video, number one, you're looking at, pitch type um, you're looking at break whether it's late break or it's early break you're looking at maybe do they get into some patterns maybe are they tipping a pitch uh, maybe is a catcher tipping a pitch I mean there's a lot of things you can look in video um, but the key is to be able to get good quality video that's in the right um, the right um, angle uh, otherwise it can be very deceiving and so um, nothing's better than the naked eye but if you can't I can't watch 20 Arkansas games, but uh, definitely there's 20 on TV that you can sit there and watch and turn off the sound and, and um, see what you can find. We got time for a couple more. Does anybody have a question for Coach Candrea? Eric? Coach, I know we spoke earlier this year where you talked about making that Florida trip 10 days and a big motivation behind that was to play in a humidity for a situation mm -hmm. like this in the Supers. How often does that come up when you figure out a schedule, thinking about things like the environment that you're playing in to prepare you for something like this down the road? Well, it, it, it um, is a constant thought of how we can prepare a team. And, um, you know, if the Florida thing that the thing about Florida back in, in February, it wasn't very humid. I mean, in March. Um, so it, it actually was pretty good weather. Um, unfortunately we couldn't go there in May or June or July when it gets really ugly, but we really just wanted to take our team on the road. And, um, you know, it began because of COVID because of a return trip to Florida state who had come to our place. And then it kind of expanded when COVID hit and we were looking for games and wanted to make sure that we, we got some games in. And so um, the big part of that was just testing our team on the road. And, um, you know, in hindsight, that probably um, we didn't get the effects that we wanted, um, but I still think there's lessons that we can draw from, um, from that trip that hopefully will help us. You, you see baseball, Major League Baseball, in, in college baseball, to have instant replay. Do you feel that softball should have instant replay? Are you frustrated that it's not at this point, considering the other sports have moved ahead and had instant replay? There was a controversial ball last week at Arkansas that looked like a home run that was called foul that couldn't be reviewed. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we're at that stage right now. There's a couple of things that have to occur, I think, in our game, many things. But one, uh, instant replay in, in postseason would be really good. I don't think it's something that that um, probably everyone can do yet um, during the regular season, but in postseason, it would be a really good benefit for us to make sure we're getting calls right because there's so much at stake uh, with those calls. And I think the other thing that people never talk about is our game has grown so much, but our umpiring pool has not. And um, therefore, I really believe that there's gonna have to come a time when we need to start recruiting and training um, umpires to play that, that understand the game at this level and that's something that i run into all the time is that i just don't feel like umpires are prepared uh, as well as our athletes are prepared and so the games kind of pass them up and you know it, it's a matter of going out and recruiting um young um former players that um 
that want to get into that because I think it would help our game too. All right, thanks everyone.